The future of upgradable gaming consoles. Hello again, I am Blunty, and last night at Computex 2016 in Taipei, the ROG, or Republic of Gamers, branded side of Asus, took to the stage in bizarrely totalitarian, militaristic-looking leather uniforms that made all the presenters look like they were cosplaying characters from some obscure biker gang anime. But aside from that distracting detail, as is the way with these things, they talked about how much ass they have been kicking and what the future looks like for them, and to the credit here, it's not all bluster, they do make some pretty nice gear. I was especially impressed with one of their 4K monitors I reviewed recently, so when they talked about a new ROG Swift 24-inch gaming monitor, I got a little bit excited. Now, I was hoping they would talk a bunch more detail about their new Strix GeForce GTX 1080 custom card and then announce a Strix flavor of the GTX 1070, but neither of those things happened. Pouty face. But they did unveil a new and surely wallet stomping off the shelf desktop machine in their pretty damn slick looking ROG aesthetic, and it's surprisingly compact, especially considering it's packing two, count them, two GeForce GTX 1080s in there. So if you want something nice and easy right off the shelf that's going to have you gaming in 4K in spectacular fashion and keep your virtual reality needs fed more than amply, then here is your out of box solution for it. But the most interesting reveal was of a concept they call Avalon, a new form factor for every aspect and component of desktop PCs, made to be fully and universally modular, making swapping out components no less fuss than sliding in a new little box thingy, like you'd change your camera battery or something. Now, this isn't even close to the first time someone has tried this. Back in 2013, for example, Razer had the same idea, and theirs was even cooler looking. But so far, nothing real has come out of that. But maybe Asus can get it off the ground. They do have more experience and likely more resources than Razer do when it comes to custom desktop gaming componentry, at least. Razer is more used to kicking us on the accessory side of things, aren't they? But the only real way this will ever really work in a way that's consumer friendly is if Asus open up the standard for anyone to use freely. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in a world of restricted choices from the few manufacturers and brands that license into this potentially proprietary system. And that will be great for them making money, but not so good for us, the consumers. This absolutely needs to be a universal open standard if Aces do actually want to make life a bit easier for the less technically inclined PC gamers out there and help further revive the PC gaming industry even more. Now, on the flip side, and to the core thought for this video, there's been much rumbling and murmuring about what the gaming console side of the industry will need to do next to survive. In particular, Microsoft have been flip-flopping all over the place on the subject of some kind of upgradable Xbox or pushing out new models more often or something. It really depends on what day of the week someone asks them about this kind of stuff because the answer is always flopping around. Then there's Sony on record as saying that something called the PlayStation 5 may not even ever, ever be a thing. Now, considering the strength of the PlayStation brand, Sony won't be abandoning it, that's for sure, but it's clear they're thinking ahead of how things will change in the world as it stands today, where the pace of progress is making console performance obsolete faster and faster than it ever has done before. I think we're at a point now where they've suddenly realized that the expected 7 to 10 year lifespan of a console is just not realistic anymore. And the PlayStation Neo is a symptom of that. And you know, both the PlayStation and Xbox, of course, both run on what at the base of it is PC componentry. They have x86 architectured processors, just like PCs do, custom tweaked GPU hardware bastardized from what you'll find in some PC graphics cards from years ago. Even the storage in them are standard PC drives. So the question now becomes, is Asus Avalon concept, or something a lot like it, the future of easy off-the-shelf gaming with a secure future of upgradability? Easy upgradability. Because you get most of the main advantages of a gaming PC build, like being able to swap out performance components, like graphics cards, CPUs, faster storage, more storage, upgradable RAM, and all other number of ancillary components, even upgrading the I.O. when new faster standards come along, like USB 3.1, Thunderbolt, stuff like that. But you'll also get the ease of use of a simple swap-out self-contained component box thingy that any idiot can understand. And that ease of use for the end user is one of the main selling points of consoles. That's why we like consoles. You plug them in, they work. 
It's hard to argue against the fact that gaming on a PC is superior in almost every way, and we're not going to get into the argument here, it's just a thing, but, you know, consoles are popular because they're nice and easy. Imagine a gaming console where you can pull out the old GPU and slide in a new one. No disassembly required, no routing of power cables, no concern about if your case or your motherboard or the way you've positioned your components inside your case will leave you room enough for a new differently shaped graphics card or whatnot. Just a standard sized component and a bay to slide it into. Clickety-clack, done. Now, whether that means that console players will then get a choice between, say, Team Red or Team Green when it comes to graphics cards is a little more difficult to say. I rather suspect if something like this ever does happen, one or the other brand would lock in a deal or license for the exclusive GPU manufacturer for that particular console. We may even see a future where the same graphics processor component can be used in either your PlayStation or your Xbox slash PC hybrid monster thing or whatever Microsoft are actually trying to accomplish there. Then we're down to a wonderful world where it's actually all about who has the best user experience, the best services, the best interface, not the power pissing contest of who is running at how many P's or at what frame rate. Now, honestly, I doubt a true universal standard across PC and consoles like this would ever be a thing, but it's nice to think about how close we can get to it. And I do honestly think at least one of the console manufacturers will dip a toe into the world of swappable components like this. Back on the PC side of things, like I said, if it's an open standard, it could do wonders for the PC gaming industry, massively reducing the level of intimidation that the thought of the upgrade chain and cycle can have on some people who just want to bloody well play their games. You can have the best of both worlds. You can have something you just buy off the shelf and plug in, but then know that, you know, in a year's time when the new graphics cards come out, you can easily swap one in, even if you're a complete technological noob. So, thoughts, ideas, dreams, my down below area awaits you all. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.